Your pet would like to have a word with you. In fact, your dog, cat, bird, horse, fish, even bearded dragon would like to have an entire conversation with you. But having that trans-species discussion is difficult without an interpreter or go-between. A specifically skilled individual who's been communicating with our animal friends for more than three decades. Bridging gaps in understanding. Elevating relationships. Building peace and harmony among all Earth's creatures. That person is Susan Vaughn, the Animal Whisperer. In this episode, an anxious dog asks, What's my job? Erin called me because her dog, a Rottweiler named Piper, seemed nervous and anxious. The dog confirmed she needed clarification on her job from a human perspective. As visions of Piper jumping in the car every morning played in my head, I asked her if she accompanied her people to work. Yes, I do, she said. And I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do there while my people rush around greeting strangers. Piper's people worked in a restaurant. Delicious smells of food cooking filled my nose, while the feeling of being at loose ends accelerated in the dog's body. The message that Piper didn't know what to do at work confused her human mom. Erin confirmed that Piper accompanied her to work, adding that the dog stuck very close to her during the workday. She offered that Piper was calm and well-behaved. Everything at work looked good from a human viewpoint, so she wanted me to focus on Piper's behavior at home. So, like, loud noises, or she's always on edge. Like, if the gate closes, she starts barking. She gets she gets scared easily when new people come around. Um, even what the people that she knows, as soon as they come around, she starts barking at them until they're right close. You know, if I have my neighbor let the dogs out for a pee and come back in, Piper won't come back. She's afraid of them, even though she knows them and spends time with them. Like, she's just not interested... Um, in new people or other dogs. She says that's where her confusion lies, that she's not sure about her protective job in such a situation. So what we need to talk to her about is uh, discrimination. You know, once you've figured out a dog or a person is okay, you want to kind of open the door to him and let him in and then relax, right? Well, she, she relaxes once they're here, once it, it's the approach. It's if a new car, if a car drives in, if people are approaching um, kids, yeah. she's not a fan of kids. If kids start running around, she will ankle bite them. Like she's, she's just nervous around new people, even though she knows the people they can, they can approach and she's just bark, 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 bark until, you know, until she settles down and then she's fine. All right, good. Let me tell her uh, that. We like her to handle it a different way. So uh, I guess what I'm going to ask her to do, because her thing here is, yeah, see, I don't know if I'm supposed to protect or for how long or what my job is in this situation. So I'm going to, to, to tell her that um, with your uh, agreement, um, just to stay calm when anyone's approaching. Yeah. I'll tell her, uh, we need you to act with discrimination. In other words, if someone approaches that you don't know with ill intent, then we would expect you to bark. Otherwise, we don't need you to bark unless you feel the ill intent, right? Would that be a good communication? Yep. yep. All right, good. All right, so let me talk to her a little bit about discrimination for a minute and whether or not she feels she understands that concept and can do it. Okay, just a moment. Okay, so I asked her, do you understand discrimination? She says, no, please explain that further. So I asked her, uh, okay, the people who approach, they send a feeling out first. The feeling they send out is either happy intent or ill intent. These are like dark, darker and lighter energies. They're uh, comfortable or not comfortable. So let me see if she gets that. Just a moment. Okay. Um, she, she's, she has an interesting story. So she says, um, all right, I want to take you to the workplace. I said, okay. She says the people in there definitely have both of those energies. I said, yes, it's kind of like a public place. So people might come to such a place who are feeling, you know, very happy or very depressed, you know, you hard to predict in the, at the workplace, you know? Um, so 
She says, uh, so am I to be more protective of the person who are feeling like down? I've said no, only the people who have ill intent. So I'm going to go back there for just a moment to reinforce that. Piper asked me if she was supposed to protect her humans from those people whose energy felt darker. That would include people who were down or depressed, so I told her no. Only act protective of your humans when the people approaching them are sending the energy of ill intent. I took a moment to reinforce that feeling for the dog before the session resumed. Okay, so um, she understands it in an interesting way. You know, is the energy reaching out Mm -hmm. to try to do something? Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, or the, the sadder energy is contained in the person usually. It's not trying to reach out. So smart, you know, smart dog. Okay, let me see if she has, uh, if she understands what I mean. She says, so do I handle that just by kind of staying still, kind of calm, low growl? Yes, I tell her, Absolutely. You don't have to go crazy. You can just let your person know, this is what I'm feeling, you know? This is what I'm feeling. When she was at work, it was during lockdown. So we we own restaurants, so it was only lockdown. So it was only the people that she's always around that were in the building. But it's like at the, I'm at the cottage right now. And um, it's like our neighbors who I see every day, like anybody approaching, anybody driving up, just anything. Um, you know, she hears the tinkle of her neighbor's dog's bell and she starts barking at that. Like she's just okay. high anxiety. I just want her to All stop right. having anxiety. Okay. Barking. Okay. Uh, one other thing that I, there's a couple of things that will help and I can let you know about them, but one is to hold gently her feet. She's just barely in her legs at all. So however much you can do that, you know, hold or pet the feet. Mm -hmm. Um, Because when I look at her legs, she's hardly in there. So she's not real grounded and that will help her. Okay. I I let her know what you need to have happen at the cottage or at the, you know, anywhere she goes. Okay. Piper's anxiety centered around her confusion about her job. Was she supposed to protect her people, be a calm companion or both? And when? The dog knew her behavior at work was supposed to be different than it was at home, but she needed to figure out the particulars. How exactly should she act in different environments? I should always warn anyone approaching that I'm there to protect my people, whether I know them or not, she told me. Piper's human companion wanted to address the Rottweiler's high anxiety, but didn't recognize when the dog was most nervous. She seemed calm at work when she wasn't. When most confused, she was either glued to her person's side or barking loudly at people and animals that she knew. And that's why it made sense to me to teach Piper about discrimination, to address the times when her people expected her to alert them about a threat, and when people and animals posed no danger. This intelligent dog understood her role much better following our session, and a calmer, more harmonious dog and human household was the result. For more episodes in the series, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. To learn all about Susan Vaughn and her services, visit her website at animalwhisperer.net. Be part of the community by subscribing to her Facebook page, animalwhisperer.net. Then sign up for Susan's newsletter to enjoy more of her fascinating animal-human communication stories. So, until next time, join Susan as she talks to the animals on... The Animal Whisperer.